This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello and welcome to our show, Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts. We're focusing on hormones. Well, endocrine glands produce and secrete hormones that are responsible for many important body functions and they play a vital role in whether or not you develop diabetes, thyroid diseases, growth disorders, even sexual dysfunctions. Thyroid hormones play a key role in a number of body systems, but how much do we really know about this gland that uh, bears such a big responsibility really when it comes to your good health. Thyroid disorders are among, among the most common diseases in India and according to one projection, an estimated 42 million people in India suffer from thyroid diseases. Well, sometimes uh, these are silent diseases when it comes to symptoms and can be overlooked. So it's even more important because of that to get medical advice, actionable advice from experts. Joining us on the program today, Dr. S. Vijay Bhaskar Reddy. He's a consultant endocrinologist with Vijay uh, Diabetes uh, Thyroid and Endocrine Clinic in Puducherry. He's also the president of Puducherry Diabetes Research Forum and an executive member of the Endocrine Society of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. We're also joined by Dr. Uday Phatke, director endocrinology and diabetes of the Sahyadri Hospitals in Pune and Dr. Nisha Bhavani, professor of endocrinology at the Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences in Cochin, Kerala. Let me begin with uh, Dr. Vijay Bhaskar Reddy. Uh, Dr. Reddy, what are the effects of thyroid disorders on body weight and um, the body's metabolism? Yes, madam. Uh, I thank uh, organizers for having invited me to, for this session. So thyroid, uh, the work of the gland, thyroid gland, which is placed in the center of the neck, the work of the gland is to produce thyroid hormones. So thyroid hormones are chemicals released from the thyroid gland which uh, act on various parts of the body. They control what is called as metabolism. So metabolism is actually uh, the process through which uh, food is converted into energy to be utilized by various cells. So various organs of the body, including the brain, the muscles, the heart, all of them require thyroid hormones for metabolism and for energy production. So the thyroid hormones are important for metabolism of various organs and they are essential for activity of various organs of the body by producing uh, energy from the food and uh, giving the energy to the cells for their activity. So thyroid hormones are essential for the activity of the brain and the functioning of the heart and the muscles. So when the body metabolism goes down, the body weight goes up. So thyroid hormones, when they are deficient, they cause reduction in the metabolism, they cause reduction in the heat production and thereby they cause uh, weight gain. So people with low thyroid hormone or hypothyroidism experience weight gain. And same thing, when the thyroid hormones go up, this called hyperfunctioning of the gland called hyperthyroidism. The body metabolism goes up and this leads on to weight loss because the metabolism is high, the heat production is high. So people with the thyroid problems, if they have low thyroid hormones, they have uh, low metabolism and they have weight gain. And people with high thyroid hormones, they have uh, uh, increased metabolism and they cause weight loss. However, borderline thyroid abnormalities are also attributed to weight gain and most often weight gain is because of uh, increased food intake and reduced physical activity or sedentary lifestyle. So borderline thyroid problems are attributed to cause of weight gain. So it is not sufficient to take thyroid hormone tablets alone, but they need to work on diet and exercise also for weight loss. Right. Uh Dr. Patke, if I can bring you in, uh, you know, there's of course hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So, you know, explain the difference to us and also when it comes to the diet, uh, you know, consumption of uh, iodized salt, etc. What are the uh, things uh, patients need to follow? So hypothyroidism is basically an under functioning of the gland, whereas hyperthyroidism is where the gland is over functioning. Now, contrary to popular belief where a lot is talked about in media about 
the importance of soya or the cabbage or broccoli in diet actually speaking these dietary constituents do not make a very significant impact on thyroid levels unless you know they are consumed in huge quantities which nobody of us does so for a routine situation for a common person consuming cabbage and broccoli in the way we do or the way we eat soya protein it doesn't really matter so much about iodine it's a little different now we know that both iodine deficiency as well as iodine excess can worsen or cause thyroid disorders and one of the most preventable causes of mental retardation was believed to be congenital hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism occurring in infants or newborn babies and to prevent that to prevent iodine deficiency the government of india started the iodinization of salt program because of which we have been able to prevent a lot of mental retardation so a lot of the iodine that is required for our body to produce the thyroid hormone actually is available to us from several foods including the water that we drink and also the salt that we use now what do we use do we use iodized salt or not so by and large if we take normal quantities of salt that means roughly about 3 tables teaspoons a day we will get adequate amount of iodine which is uh, enough for the functioning of a thyroid gland for those people who do not want to take iodized salt they can also receive this iodine through other dietary sources like grains like eggs like curd that means dahi they can also get it through uh, seafood particularly the oily fish like salmon or tuna which not many people in india actually consume but overall i think that there are no major dietary changes required for thyroid diseases except taking an adequate amount of iodine not excess not less and the last caution that i would like to give is that beware of certain things because number of over the counter uh, nutraceutical products or tonics also contain a lot of iodine so be careful your body requirement is not more than 150 micrograms so be sure that you're not taking too much of iodine inside your body right dr bhavani can hyperthyroidism be considered as a symptom of thyroid cancer generally no hyperthyroidism as uh, the previous doctor told is a condition where your thyroid gland produces excess of thyroid hormones leading to weight loss palpitation tremors and extreme fatigue uh, so the commonest cause of hyperthyroidism is a disease called graves disease this disease is due to autoimmune um, immune antibodies these antibodies causes the thyroid gland to produce excess thyroid hormones Uh, some of the graves disease patient don't have a goiter at all goiter means enlargement of the thyroid gland so when you have no goiter and you have hyperthyroidism due to graves disease you run zero chance of developing a thyroid cancer but some graves disease patients can have a goiter and th- these also they don't have a chance of developing thyroid cancer but some uh, goiters in graves disease can have small nodules in them these nodules need to be evaluated to see whether there is a chance of thyroid cancer and if it is there you need to take it out by surgery right. now the second commonest cause of hyperthyroidism is called toxic multinodular goiter that means some there will be a nodules uh, in the thyroid and they will be secreting excess of thyroid hormones these nodules also in general are benign and they usually occur in elderly but some of these nodules can rarely be, be associated with thyroid cancer so whenever there is a nodule in your thyroid gland associated with hyperthyroidism you have to rule out the presence of a thyroid cancer but generally it is not a symptom of thyroid cancer dr patke you know explain to us then what are the types of thyroid cancer just how common are they 
So there are several types. The commonest thyroid cancer is called papillary cancer. And this is followed uh, in prevalence by follicular cancer, something called medullary cancer, and also anaplastic cancers. Now, actually speaking, the incidence or the prevalence of thyroid cancers has increased over the last five to 10 years. And it is believed that roughly between one to 2% of adults, particularly those with thyroid swellings or goiters, could actually develop thyroid cancers. The fortunate part is that most thyroid cancers are very much amenable to treatment and they do not cause uh, you know, accelerated mortality. So the chance of dying with a thyroid cancer, as with other cancers, is very minimal. Also, they are so amenable to therapy that 10 year survival rates are very, very good. And that means we more or less consider thyroid cancers as curative. Right. The usual numbers that are being seen in larger numbers nowadays is also believed to be because of overdiagnosis. Because people are going and investigating themselves with, say, ultrasounds or CT scans for a variety of reasons, cancers which are even small and otherwise could be kind of ignored or left alone are also being diagnosed and that's adding to numbers. Right. We will take a very quick break at this point, but there's lots more to talk about, including the link between goiter and cancer and just how thyroid triggers goiter. All of that when we come back in just a moment. Welcome back to Health and Wellness Myths versus Facts. We're focusing on the thyroid hormone and its various impacts on the body. Let me go right across to Dr. Vijay Bhaskar Reddy. Uh, Dr. Reddy, what triggers uh, goiter? Can thyroid goiters, uh, you know, just be transient? Do they come sometimes and go away? Or, you know, once you have goiter, is this something you have to live with? Yes, madam. I, I would first deal with what is a goiter. Goiter is an abnormal enlargement of the thyroid gland. So we can have a complete enlargement or uniform enlargement of the thyroid gland or you can have part of the thyroid gland which is enlarged. So uniform enlargement of the thyroid gland is uh, diffuse goiter and if you have a part of the thyroid gland which is looking different from the other part that is called a nodule, sometimes you can have multiple nodules in the thyroid. I would, uh, by goiter, I would restrict myself to uniform enlargement of the thyroid gland. So, uniform enlargement of the thyroid gland can happen with uh, different forms of thyroid function. So, people can have low thyroid hormones and uniform enlargement of the, of the and goiter. People can have high thyroid hormones and goiter. Mm -hmm. People can have normal mm -hmm. thyroid hormones and goiter. So, goiter can be due to iodine deficiency. So, the government has found policies to correct the iodine deficiency by universal iodization of salt. So, as long as we, we use iodized salt in our diet, then we, we can avoid iodine deficiency and goiter due to iodine deficiency. Second most common of cause of goiter is uh, autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is one's own immune cells go and have a reaction in the thyroid and the thyroid hormone production goes down and the pituitary gland stimulates the thyroid to grow bigger. So low thyroid hormones due to autoimmunity called Hashimoto's thyroiditis causes swelling of the thyroid gland. In some conditions we have hyperthyroidism or hyperfunctioning of the thyroid gland where the thyroid gland is not under the control of the body and the thyroid becomes big and produces more thyroid hormones. This can also cause uh, diffuse or uh, uh, uniform enlargement of the gland called goiter. Right. So goiter refers to an enlargement of the thyroid gland and it can be due to mm. low hormones, high hormones and it can be associated with normal hormones also. Sometimes when the patients have goiter, especially due to low thyroid hormones, when we supplement the thyroid hormones from outside, then the goiter goes down. Similar in iodine deficiency, you correct the iodine deficiency, the goiter goes off. Yeah. Um, Dr. Bhavani, let me bring you in on this as well. Are goiters cancerous? Uh, you know, 
do we have to carry out uh, biopsies necessarily if uh, someone uh, has goiter? Yeah, as Dr. Reddy already told, diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland is usually due to uh, thyroid dysfunction, hormone abnormalities, and will not develop cancers. Right. But when you have nodules in the thyroid, you have a nodular goiter, uh, there is a small chance that there is a thyroid cancer there. Its nodules are very common in the thyroid gland. You do an ultrasound scan on 100 patients sitting in your OPD. You will find small nodules in the thyroid gland of around 30 of them. But most of them, 90 to 95 percentage of them, are non-tumorous. They are simple colloid goiters or small nodules which are otherwise harmless. Only less than 5 percentage of these nodules will bear a thyroid cancer. So your focus on evaluating a thyroid nodule is to rule out a thyroid cancer. So the first step for doing that is to do an ultrasound scan of your thyroid and see the features which suggest whether it is benign or whether it is any harm, any, anything harmful. And depending on the size of the nodule and de depending upon the sonographic features, the doctor will decide whether to do a fine needle aspiration cytology or fine needle biopsy of the nodule. If it looks completely benign, it is fluid filled nodule, you need not do a, do a biopsy. But right. if there is a suspicion of cancer, you have to do a biopsy and make sure that it is completely harmless. And if it comes out to be harmful also, thyroid cancer can be treated completely with surgery. Okay, so uh, Dr. Reddy, then what are the treatment options? Uh, you know, can goiter come back after being removed? So if the goiter comes back uh, uh, after treatment, madam? Yes, that's right. Yes, so often what happens is uh, uh, the treatment patients think that the treatment for thyroid problems are for short duration and they stop the treatment. So, most common cause of uh, goiter at present is thyroid hormone deficiency due to autoimmunity. Once more, immune cells makes antibodies against the thyroid and blocks it. So, if they stop the thyroid hormone replacement when they are deficient, then the pituitary again stimulates the thyroid to grow by stimulating by secreting this uh, thyroid stimulating hormone and thereby again the swelling the goiter comes up so we have to find out if the patient has stopped the thyroxine replacement and we have to again replace the thyroxine uh, from outside if they, once they start taking the tablet then the swelling keeps going down okay um Dr. Bhatke, what are thyroid nodules then? And, uh, you know, what is caused, uh, how is it different from goiter? And, you know, what causes these thyroid nodules? So, as was explained, any swelling inside the thyroid gland is called a goiter. A goiter, as was explained earlier, could be a uniform enlargement of the thyroid gland, which in most cases is not related to malignancy or cancer, but sometimes only local or focal areas of the thyroid can become big and they may stand out like a swelling on the neck. Now, these are called nodules and they are different in structure from the rest of the thyroid gland. And the main important thing in such nodules is to rule out cancer. About 20% of these nodules, based on their characteristics and size, could be malignant and they have to be investigated mainly to rule out cancer. Otherwise, most of these, that means 80% of these nodules are benign and <clears throat> they are not due to any particular cause per se, but there are two important causes known. One of them is iodine deficiency. So people living in iodine deficient areas particularly those who are not exposed to adequate quantities of iodine in their diet could develop these nodules. Sometimes, as I said, nodules are malignant. And lastly, people who have these autoimmunities, that means cells of the, of the immunological system targeted against their own thyroid gland can develop nodules inside their thyroid right. gland as well. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll leave it at that for today. Thank you all for joining us. We hope this discussion has been useful and shed a great deal of light on thyroid diseases. Thanks for watching.